Okay, we're back on the record. It's Mr. Drawbell. Okay, so in your opinion, would it be abnormal for any child to be pretty stressed during a litigation, you know, for in, in any family? Is that abnormal to be stressed? Um, in my experience, as a family law practitioner, um, kids run the gamut. I don't usually see kids, right? I see parents. Um, so it's hard for me to answer your question because I don't, I don't see kids during litigation. I see the parents. So all I have is what parents report to me. Um, some parents report that their kids are totally stressed out, and some parents say that their kids don't know anything about the litigation. So it's hard for me to answer your question about whether a kid would be, whether it'd be abnormal for a kid to be stressed out, because I don't usually deal directly with kids. Okay. Um, so do you know how many times Alicio was actually impacted and had to be admitted to the hospital for a cleanup? Those are not the same thing, in my opinion. Being admitted to the hospital, being cleaned out, and being impacted are different different medical events. I asked you, do you know how many times you've been impacted and had to be admitted to be cleaned out? My understanding is twice. Well, that was three times, but I opted to just do outpatient. Do you think that children are allowed to choose what family they're born into, how many siblings they have, and decide based off of that who they want to live with? No. I don't, I don't really have too many more questions. Right, and just so you know, the wishes of the child are part, one of many factors that we have to consider mm -hmm. as part of the best interest. Um, so she's here as his advocate to tell us what he wants um, and what she thinks is in his best interest um, from his perspective and from what she's seen relating to him, the medical records and what have you. Um, and so it's not that she gets to choose, not that he gets to choose, but it's one, one factor of, yeah. of many. So, um, with that, um, any other questions for her? Um, did Aliana mention anything about her relationship with Nohe? No. She did not. So, okay. I guess. Is that it? Okay, Ms. Vasquez? Yes. Okay, Ms. Rosenblum, um, Alicio's 11, he'll be 12 this week. Um, based off your meetings with him, uh, do you feel that Alicio is mature enough to state his preference to this court on where he wants to reside? Yes. And can you tell, can you describe that a little bit for me? Yeah. Um, can you just, I was going to just ask you why. Yeah. Um, it it kind of leave you open-ended for you to kind of explain why you think he's mature enough to make that decision. In my interactions with Alicio, um, at first, to me, he kind of came across as very shy, very introverted. Um, as we got to know each other a little more, he, I think, became more comfortable with me, more comfortable with my office, more comfortable with the environment. Um, and he is articulate. He is smart. He is, um, I, I would use the word savvy to a certain extent. He's, uh, but I don't mean it in a, 
in a bad way. He, he, he knows what's going on around him. He is not dumb. He knows um, parents are at odds. He knows litigation. He knows um, what's happening. And, and I think he's very, um, he's a very sensitive kid. He doesn't seem, he wasn't immature, he wasn't, he, he seems age appropriate. I mean, just for his age, he's age appropriate. Um, again, having raised a child that age, a boy that age, um, his answers to my questions, our interactions weren't inappropriate, they weren't immature. He at first kind of gave the standard I don't know I'm not sure kind of answers uh, but again I think as we became more comfortable with each other and he understood what my role was he was very articulate about what he wanted how he was feeling um, how just in in terms of very different things about that the living situation with dad about the school about what he's excited about in school about the end of school we talked um, briefly about the end of school um, grades friends pets we talked a lot about pets um, family members you know at mom's house family members at dad's house so he's he's very articulate he's not a dumb kid he's not an immature kid. Um, he's he's really he's a, he's a he seems like a really good kid, like a smart kid that knows you know what he wants. I, I again I would just stress that he's afraid to hurt people's feelings. I think that he kind of holds back a little bit just because he doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings here. Mm -hmm. Did you think that his preference was based upon? reasonable facts other than you know what I'm saying like as opposed to I think that would demonstrate maturity versus you know I get to eat ice cream at mom's every night for dinner but is it more reasonable rational like well thought out basis <laughs> yes. for his preference he is able to articulate multiple times his preference for custodial schedule and his preference for visitation under different scenarios with different people bringing him, um, different people in my waiting room. Just, he was very clear on where he wants to live, what he wants a visitation schedule to be, and why. He, he was very clear. And the why being, I'm sorry, I'm gonna make you repeat yourself. Um, the, I think that he describes a lot of chaos at Dad's house, a lot of people at Dad's house. Um, I think, to he didn't say it direct to me, but I think the idea of having his life on blast on social media is difficult for him. Um, he is aware of comments that have been made about his sister on social media and comments, like pictures of his underwear being on social media. He is aware. He knows that that has happened. Um, and I think too, he just, he is very clear with me that he doesn't want to keep going to the doctors and that seems to happen more so on dad's time than on mom's. So those things seem to form his okay. desire. Okay. That makes sense. All right. I don't know if that was helpful. It was. <laughs> it was. Ms. Vasquez? Uh, you said that he's... He doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Are you aware of either mom or dad telling him what to say to you? No, I did not get that impression in any way from him okay. at all. Um, and, and can I clarify that? Yes. I did ask him that question directly. Has anyone told you what to say or told you what we're going to talk about? And he is very clear that neither parent has, has said say this or tell her this and you feel that he's very uh he feels a confidence in you to be honest about that i believe so yeah i think that we have uh, definitely developed the attorney client relationship great um you described that alicio um experienced stress with the chaos in dad's house 
You also talked about the stress of this litigation. Obviously, this litigation is going to end. Um, do you think that he will still continue being stressed by the chaos in Dad's home if there was a joint custody situation? I, I Sorry. don't know if I can answer that question. <laughs> I, I guess is your question if if the court were to say joint custody, would would Alicio continue to be stressed out by being in Dad's home? Yes, for uh, weeks at a, a week at a time. I don't know if I can answer that. Um, Elicio made it very clear to me that his desire for Dad to have less time and him to be with Mom the majority of the time was based on a lot of different, uh, the factors that I just explained to the judge. Um, he describes Dad's house as chaotic and just there being a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of people. Um, I can't answer, I, my opinion is that if this litigation ends, there will be some restoration of Alicio's peace of mind I'm not sure how much or how little the timeshare will impact that. You don't think, uh, do you think his stress will be reduced if he spends less time in the chaotic environment? I don't know if I can answer that. Based off his um, preference that he said to you, do you think that's why he made that preference? I don't know if I can answer that question. Okay. If, if his medical treatment were managed differently, would the time, because I mean, it sounds to me like the timeshare, he feels like the longer I spend it, I'm just, I'm going to kind of throw it yeah. out. The longer I spend at dad's, the more exposed I am to potential doctor visit here or doctor visit there. But if that's managed differently, do you think that potentially could quell his concerns? I I think Alicia has a clear preference. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure that managing the medical would alleviate or change his or preference. change his preference. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, you said you reviewed a lot of records mm -hmm. for a lot of hours. Um, based off those records, who is the parent that's taking him to all of these? The primary parent taking him to all of these records in the past uh, doctor visits in the past two years. In, from my recollection, it is mostly dad. Um, a lot of the hospital visits seem to be dad. Um, I know there's a. I'm sorry, I don't have the way I laid out the records in front of me. Um, well, and I would say dad and his wife, I think, tend to be the ones taking him. Um, there has been, my recollection is, a urologist or urology group that Alicio has been seeing seems to also be dead. I reviewed a lot, a lot, a lot of records. Um, I'm not sure that I really reviewed it to see who was taking him specifically. And I didn't total it up. Is that right, but from mean? just a summary, you think it's mostly dad taking him to, you said hospital, you mean like the ER? ER, okay. yeah. There's a lot of ER visits. And you also expressed your concerns about some of the recommended procedures. Specifically, what were those procedures that you were concerned about? Um, I have concerns about the idea of doing Botox for a lot of different reasons. Um, I know that that was a recommendation. I believe there were recommendations for uh, urodynamic studies um, and uroflow studies. I believe there's a recommendation for motility study. Um, I have concerns about that also. Those, those, the Botox is, is deeply concerning for a lot of different reasons. Um, motility studies are concerning as well. Um, 
I believe he w there was a recommendation for your dynamic study as well. Uh, not as concerning, but still concerning. Um, so, yeah. In general, why is that? A, why are these specific procedures you're concerned for, at least you specifically? So you have a child. The, the complaint overall is that Elisio can't control his bowels, right? Um, one way or the other, that either he becomes constipated because he's not he's not uh, defecating in the way in a normal pattern, or that he is um, having episodes of loss of control of his bowels. And so, in my opinion, looking at the overall medical records in this case, mm -hmm. the concern is managing Alicio's bowel habits. Um, it seems as though his bowel habits have been managed okay through medication, diet, and managing his stress. Um, Botox carries risk that I'm not sure even the medical community knows yet. Um, it is an invasive, it would be an invasive procedure. Um, in discussing that option with, a, with the PA, uh, she was adamant that that is not appropriate for a child of this age or with these conditions um, at this point. Motility studies, it's sort of the same idea. Um, the treatment for what the complaints are with Elicio seem to be what the doctors have recommended and what the parents are doing. And so, you know, you're not seeing a child um, that has comorbidities where these type of procedures would need to be done. Uh, again, I'm not a physician, and I don't know that I have the entire universe of Alicio's medical records, but as a parent and as someone who has worked in medical for a long time, these seem to be extreme recommendations um, that I would be very cautious of moving forward. I, I, I would, again, I would like to see the court order one physician to review the medical records and coordinate care and if and if a specialist believes that these procedures are appropriate then parents should move forward with these procedures but at this point there is a lot of medical that's all over the place and not consistent through any treatment provider in my opinion mm -hmm. um. In relation to your opinion about having one medical provider, uh, do you have any opinion based off these parents' uh, high conflict? Would it be better if there was one parent um, guiding that uh, doctor's appointments and stuff like that with that one doctor? No. This, in, in my opinion, both parents need to be involved in at least and it should be both parents, um, not both parents and significant others. It should be both parents or, and not both parents and grandma or, you know, brother or whatever. It should be both parents and they should both be involved in identifying a primary care physician, whether it's an internist or a pediatrician providing the medical records to that internist and pe or pediatrician, um, primary care physician, and letting that physician from there make recommendations for specialists. Um, in my opinion, I believe that the more adults that are involved in Alicio's medical creates more conflict. I think that the more adults that are involved put their own spin on what Alicio's medical is or what he needs to have done, and I think it causes Alicio a lot of stress. 
that there are a lot of different adults who have a lot of different opinions about what is wrong with him medically, if anything, and they're putting that stress on Alicia. You did a supplemental report, which mostly has to deal with your concern of Alicia's stepmother. And what are your concerns of her involvement in Alicia's medical treatment? It's, it's what I just said. So the supplement came out of social media posts that were provided to me that I was made aware of. Um, Eliseo is 11, almost 12. My understanding is he has access to social media. My understanding is that he has access to um, or he knows about or is told about social media posts. And, and I don't want to say that comes from mom. I, I think probably it comes from sister. Um, He's an 11, almost 12 year old boy who's underwear being photographed and placed on social media and comments being made about mom and um, comments being made about litigation. And I think that he is not a dumb, like I said, he's not a dumb kid. He knows this is a high conflict case. I think that causes him more stress. Um, and again, I think having, I watched a video where there were a ton of people present with a physician. I don't want to say a ton. I think it was dad and dad's wife and mom and, and her significant other. And just comments being made and things being said with Alicio there, it, it's just not good for him. This is mom and dad. This is you know their child together, and they need to cooperate and communicate and have, um, they need to have direct communication. It, it, this shouldn't be delegated to their significant others, either one of them. Uh, <clears throat> in addition to... Oh, hold on, I got a question. Hold that thought. Okay. With that being said, there's been discussion in here where Dad says, I have a hard time... Before Mom had a relationship, I had an easy time talking to Mom. Mm -hmm. Now Mom has a relationship, not easy time talking to Mom. Um, and Mom has sort of admitted... Mm, yeah, it makes it tough on me because I have to, you know, I live with this person mm -hmm. and she may get upset about what's going on and so I've got to, you know, play this in such a way that I'm not, I'm dealing with dad but I'm also not making my significant other mad. And not specifically about the medical but just in general they've talked about like just in sharing him, like dealing with exchanges and all kinds of things that come up that mm -hmm. it's clear that they don't, communicate well anymore because of this other influence and it happens I mean I'm not criticizing Nohea or mom I'm just saying it it has happened and I don't think that anybody disputes that that's happened that their their communication level has dropped significantly since this relationship has commenced and there's <coughs> ill feelings from coming I think probably going both directions at this point so how do we how do we um, manage that what do you think about that? Um, I have only met Nohea, I think, mm -hmm. once, maybe twice mm -hmm. in my waiting room. She has, to my knowledge, not, at least with me, not inserted herself into this litigation. Um, I, again, I watched a video of interactions um, I, I think that the best the court can do is limit third parties or significant others with you know parent teacher conferences with school function not not attending school you know not attending Alicio's events but just if there's a parent teacher conference or if there is an issue with Alicio or if there is a medical appointment, it should be mom and dad. Mm -hmm. um, the interactions I I saw on the video um, it was just, and I don't think that either. I don't think that stepmom and I don't think no hair are doing it on purpose, like you know, 
Not I, I don't really think they even realize that what they're saying in the way that they, and, or at least what I watched, I know, what, what I saw, I don't think they realize how that impacts Alessio. Um, I, I would believe, and I could be wrong, that they both feel like they're being supportive. They're being supportive of their significant others. They feel like they're being supportive of Alessio. And, and I think that it, it's just stressing them out even right. more, mm -hmm. right? To have all these other people there and kind of giving their input. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't know if stepmom and O'Hare are more medically savvy than mom and dad, um, but it would be nice to see just mom and dad being the ones to participate, being the ones present, um, being the ones to be involved. I, I think that that would be the best thing for Alicia. Okay, sorry, Ms. Vasquez, go ahead. You're fine. In addition to prohibiting third parties in the medical appointments, do you think that the parents should also be prohibited in sharing Alicia's medical information with third parties? No, no. Um, I don't think that that's realistic, first of all. Uh, and second of all, you know, again, I think stepmom and and they, I think they both care about Alicio. I think they want to know what's going on with him. I think that he's close to both of them. I think he loves both of them. Uh, I don't, I don't believe it's realistic to prohibit either one of them from communicating with their significant others about what's going on. Is it more realistic if the court ordered that the parents? Um, do not do or do not or, or encourage their partners or other third parties to not disclose medical information on public social media. In addition to that, real quick, I'm going to add on to that question. From your legal opinion and your, med your medical background, is that in violation of HIPAA at all? Um, HIPAA is a narrow, <laughs> is a narrow statute. Mm -hmm. Am I... Gosh, I didn't bring my HIPAA expertise today. Uh, it's a narrow statute. My recollection is that HIPAA applies directly to the facility and not to third parties. So, I mean, I think it relates expert. to the medical provider and, right. the, and the patient, right. not, not to family a member. family member. Right. So, right. Um, in terms of is it a violation that she identified his medical conditions or posted medical records online, I don't, I don't believe that she has any liability under the HIPAA laws for doing that. Um, but that, again, that's I'm reaching way back into my HIPAA law. I think you're. I think you're right. And yeah. then, the, then the question becomes a First Amendment issue too. So, right. um, obviously, the encouragement. I mean, encouragement from the bench would be both parties should do what they think is in his best interest. And if it means, I mean, weighing my desire to relay this because so, you know there, there's anger or there's um, or there's, am I trying to say, of course, conflict and wanting to share this information versus what's best for um, Alicio. And so, I mean, everybody has the right to, to do what they think is appropriate on yeah. social media. If they, th if they want to share it, I think that I, I would step on, I would tread on people's First Amendment rights if I told them they couldn't, but I also um, think they need to use their heads. And, and do, because if he's learning that this is happening, and I'm just starting to like opine from here at this point, but if he's learning it's, that this is happening and it's embarrassing him or it's stressing him out even that much more, the idea that, that you could, you know, you're free to post this stuff doesn't mean that you should. And so that's where I think dad and mom both need to consider those things when they're sharing that information with their significant others, and I know that in this in this particular case, and I don't know if it's happened in other cases, in this in this case in other um, times, but in this particular instance where it was raised in your report that it happened on Dad's side with Dad's wife, mm -hmm. um, I saw it and I understood what her you know she was excited about you know we're being heard and this is happening and whatever, but at the same time if he's seeing it. It doesn't. It just doesn't help the situation. So, so I get it. Um, but I, I can't stop her from doing. 
Well, just as your, as Alicia's representative, his voice today, would Alicia like this to stop these uh, social media postings about him? Um, I, I believe that in general, Alicia wants everyone to get along, and he wants mom's side and dad's side to be happy. He wants them to get along and communicate. Um, and I, I think if the posts on social media were about, hey, Alicia did this great thing at school, or he played in this football game, or here, here it was, um, he would have no problem right, <laughs> right with that. But in terms of what is happening in this litigation in general, I think that Alicia just wants the litigation to end. He doesn't want there to be hurt feelings on either side. Do you think it would help this case if uh, both parties took a co-parenting class? Yeah, I mean, I think I think every parent can benefit from a co-parenting class. Do you know if, are you aware of either party not taking it yet? Uh, I know I reviewed all of the pleadings that have been filed, and I honestly can't remember if both parties took it or not. Yes, we both did. You both took it, right? I, yeah. I don't remember. I mean, I, I think that yeah. what you're I, talking about is even a more, um, probably a more intensive like class. Like cooperative than just parenting? Yeah, is there any, um, I don't know what co-parenting class they took. I'm actually not aware of that taking any, as of the record. You're anyways. talking about the regular co-class, the co class, the, uh, yeah. yeah. I believe yeah, I, I recall that being the case. I'm not sure it's been filed anyways. If it it might not be. But um, it's I'm sorry? Yes, it's not been filed, so that's why I don't know if he has or not. But um, You did the online one? Yeah, I thought he did. Um, Ms. Rosemont, just based off your experience in family law, is there a specific type of co-parenting class that you, could, that you think they could help for Alicio or Aliana? Since you met with her as well, besides, um, the, besides the basic co-parenting that they're required to take, I don't know if you and LV cooperative parenting would necessarily benefit either party in this case. Um, I think the end of litigation will be telling. Okay. For this case, that's my opinion. Um, did you, in addition to the medical records, did you review his school records at all? I believe I reviewed some school records. I, I don't remember. You talked about a, f a football game incident. Have you reviewed the school records since that incident? I was provided with a letter, I believe it was from someone at the school, regarding what had happened at the football game. And you're aware that, that, did that letter say dad was banned from football games going forward? I'm aware of that. And have you talked to Alicio about that incident? At I all? have not. Um, there was also an incident with the school about um, Alicio stating he was in fear of dad. It, it created, it caused dad to file his, his pending motions. Have you read any school records on that issue? I believe I reviewed a motion filed by Dad, and I think I might have reviewed something filed by Mr. Burton in regard to that. Um, I don't remember if there were school records attached. Okay, and and you you earlier you stated that Alicia basically has a good relationship with with everybody. Um, if you had an opportunity to talk to Alicia about those two incidences, um, would you like? Would you update? Yep. Um, I made it clear to Alicia the last time I met with him that I am his attorney. If he believes that there is an issue happening, um, he should feel free to call me at any time, no matter what parent he's with. And if parents will not let him call, he needs to report to the school, who I believe is also aware that I represent him, uh, I believe the school has been provided with a copy of the order appointing me as the guardian and litem. That if he is not in a position where he can call for me the parents' home, he needs to report to his teacher that he wants to call me as his attorney. Um, to my knowledge, Alicio has not called. I have had communication with parents 
but not with Felicio. Okay. And at all, um, at any time that you met Felicio, he's never reported any type of physical abuse from never. not just dad, but both parents? Never. Um, what about Aliana? Aliana, when I met with Aliana, she reported an incident with dad. Um, I believe she said dad maybe slapped her in the face or, or something of that nature. Um, she reported that to me. I, and that's in your report? I yes. Believe. Okay. Have, did you talk to either uh, dad or mom about that? If they knew anything about that situation? Um, I believe mom is is aware. I my conversation with Eliana was not to represent her because my understanding is that I'm not appointed to represent her interests. Um, my conversation with Eliana was to obtain information about Elicio and what she has, what her thoughts were as far as both homes and being at school and, and that kind of information. Um, I handled dependency cases and I did not feel that what Eliana reported to me rose to the level of making a report to CPS. Okay. Um, I think Eliana and her dad had an exchange of words and Maybe there was a reaction to that. I didn't feel like, um, at least from my recollection, I didn't feel like it was something I needed to report to Metro or report to CPS. It, it is in the report. Yeah, do you recall um, when that incident happened? How far removed was that? I believe it was a fairly recent incident. And was Alicio also aware of that incident? I believe Alicio was present when it occurred. Did he express anything to you, uh, any feelings he had about witnessing that incident? He did not. inserted her in this litigation, do you feel that stepmom has inserted herself in this litigation either in, in any aspect that you have an opinion of? Um, I've met with stepmom. We met in my office. I spoke with her. Um, I get the feeling that stepmom is the organizational side of dad, <laughs> and so I feel like she's... Um, I don't want to say she's inserted herself into the litigation. I think that she is more involved in um, helping dad prepare for trial. Obviously, mom has an attorney and someone that can help organize documents and records and things like that. I think that stepmom has assisted dad in that way. Um, and I do believe that stepmom, you know, she has a relationship with Alicia. He, he, cares about her a lot and loves her and loves the kids and um, they seem like they're pretty close on that side like they have a really good relationship um, and so I think she is involved at least from what I can gather I believe she's involved in in the medical appointments and in the schooling and some of that stuff uh, probably at least more than what I've observed as far as Nohea on mom's side of that goes you think that all of the doctor's appointments um, that Alicia has gone through the past two years are litigation motivated or in his best friend, best interest? I believe that dad and and stepmom both um, have legitimate concerns about Alicia's medical well-being. I don't believe that they are gearing the appointments towards litigation, at least from what I can see. I believe that there is a complete lack of understanding on the medical side of 
what is happening with Alicia? I, I and I don't want to say a lack of understanding. I think that they under. I think everyone has opinions about what Alicia's bowel habits are and what the impaction um, was. I think any parent under that circumstance in that situation would be scared moving forward. I believe that there's a desire for answers as to a cause when that occurred. Um, I believe that there is a fear that it could happen again because it could be life-threatening. Um, I think that what they went through the first time was concerning and so again I think there that there is a desire to look for answers and a desire to determine what caused that way back when um, that to me seems to be their driving motivation I, I don't believe their driving motivation is necessarily all by itself is litigation I have concerns about what's being reported, but I, I don't know what's in their mind. I mean, I, I'm not sure that it's motivated by litigation. I think they're concerned. Um, rationally or irrationally, I think they're concerned. Um, did you see anything in your report, um, I could be misquoting you because I can't find it, but anything in relation to this being some sort of medical abuse? In my opinion, medical abuse is a difficult line, right, to walk. Um, Elysio has seen a lot of doctors. Um, some of the re recommendations by those physicians are extreme. Again, I go back to the Botox being, to me, the most extreme measure. Um, I think probably the next thing would be, you know, cut Alicia open and figure out what's going on, right? And that would be incredibly extreme. Um, again, I go, I feel like there's concern, and this is, there's a concern motivating this, and a desire for answers that aren't readily apparent. Um, you know, continuing to take Elysio to doctors and emergency rooms and and the idea, the desire of wanting these sort of extreme and invasive procedures to me it starts to get closer to the line of medical abuse. Um, you know, 14 different physicians in a two-year period is a lot. It's a lot. I, I'm not, again, not a CPS investigator, I'm not a physician. These are questions that would need to be asked of experts in that area. Okay. Um, earlier you mentioned that Alicia reported missing some medication for at mom's house. How often does that happen? Um, he didn't represent that it was like a regular thing. I mean, he said that it's happened, um, but not, you know, not, not on a daily or weekly basis or anything like that. He's, he's mentioned in the past that it's happened. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So I have dad who's hypervigilant, mm -hmm. and I have a dad who thinks mom is under, yes. right, concerned or not as concerned as he is. And... Obviously, his like you just said, I mean, legitimately concerned for his child's health. Did you see when you met with mom that she didn't understand the potential severity or, cons or problem that could occur if he is impacted again or if he doesn't take his medicine or if he isn't eating right? Because those are the big things that dad raises. Yeah. I mean, my, my honest answer to that is no. I think mom... I think mom truly understands that if this isn't handled appropriately, this could have life-threatening consequences. I don't think that that's lost on her in any way. She, she understands. Um, 
and I don't think that she is neglectful or inappropriate. It, she's mom's mom and dad's struggle is that they have, you know, a boy that's quickly becoming a young man, and so how do you force him to take medication or follow a diet or, you know, exercise good bowel habits as he becomes older? I think that that's a struggle they're both gonna have moving forward. Uh, but I do believe mom understands. I don't think she takes it lightly in any way. I didn't get that feeling from her at all. Does Alicia understand the, the potential severity of it if it gets impacted again? Or like that he needs to be really focused on doing what's right? I mean, did he understand <laughs> it at least? I know he didn't maybe do it, but... <laughs> I think he gets it. I'm not sure if he agrees with it. I think he gets it. He he knows what's you know what's at stake and what this looks like. Um, I mean, when you're 11, you don't think anything. Right. You think you're gonna live forever and you know you're yeah, invincible you're and it doesn't mm -hmm. apply to you. And so, um, yeah. I mean, I think he understands and he knows he's got to drink and he's got to eat and he's got to take his medication. He he seems to understand that. Um, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, he's, yeah, he gets it. I, I just, you know, he's walking that line too, right? Between understanding these are the things I need to do and being a 12 year old kid. Okay. Ms. Vasquez, anything else? I am done and would actually like to request a bathroom break. Okay. We can take a bathroom break, um, and then we'll keep you here just in case we, he has okay. any more questions. Okay. I just need to.